13. When you found it, I'd ask that those that are able would rest to your feet to honor the reading of God's holy word. Matthew, the third chapter, beginning at the third, excuse me, 13th verse, Matthew 3 and 13. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. And comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened up to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my Son, in whom I am well pleased. This is my Son, in whom I am well pleased. Please, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Why don't you pray with me? Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed us until we want no more. God of grace and God of mercy, we thank you so much for yet another time to gather around the table together. We stand in need, O oh God, for a word from you to feed our hearts, our souls, our minds today, God. So come as only you can and sit upon our hearts. Let your word fall on good soil, God, that it may sprout up and bear fruit for your kingdom, O oh God. We pray right now, God, for every ear that may hear, every heart they may listen today, O oh God. And O oh God, hide me deep behind Calvary's rugged cross. Fill me up, O oh God. Let your people hear not from me, O oh God, but hear from your throne of grace. This is your servant's prayer. And all of God's people said amen. 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 At this time, we'll get a second for our young folks to be dismissed for Children's Church. And as they're preparing to leave out for Children's Church, do remind us just to keep us, Reverend Bohannon, in, in your prayers as she continues to recover. Uh, just keep her in your prayers today. I want to talk to you, if I may, for a little while, a short time, uh, because ain't like y'all got brunch reservations because it's Father's Day. Y'all don't do that kind of stuff for Father's Day. Y'all don't. But for the time that we are together, I'd like to share with you from the subject, the power of presence. The power of presence. Uh, I'm reminded today, um, as you all know, I, I'm the youngest of, of three. I, I, I come behind a, a brother, I come behind my sister, and then the joy of David and Denise showed up in September of 1988. Uh, I, I, I'm the youngest of three, and as the youngest of three, I, I had the great opportunity to watch uh, how my brother and sister engaged with the world before I did. Yeah, yeah, I had, had the opportunity to learn lessons uh, that, that I didn't have to go through because I could learn through observation of my brother and my sister. I, I learned that there were some things that, that I didn't want to do because I saw with my own eyes how things came down on them. That, that's the benefit of being the youngest. You, you, you learn how, how, how to do things. And so sometimes older siblings get upset because they, they think younger siblings don't, don't get it as hard. It's not that we don't get it as hard. We just learn not to do dumb stuff because we watch you. That's, 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 all, that's all that happens. We, we learn. We learn by, by watching. 
And I'll never forget uh, my sister. My sister, she was gone to junior prom and she was gone. And I remember my dad told her very clearly what time she needed to be home. And I, I remember I was sitting in my bedroom. It was late that night and I was watching TV on the black and white TV that I got from my granddad's house because my mom and dad wouldn't let me have a television. But my granddad had an old one in the garage and he said, if you can make it work, you can have it. So I was watching TV on this black and white television television with the two knobs on the, you know, as I was in my room and I heard my dad get up and it was probably about 1130-ish, almost 12 o'clock or even maybe a little bit later, but it was strange because when my father goes to bed, he goes to bed, he, he goes to bed, and, and, and I heard him get up and, and I, I saw him with his coat and he had his bedroom shoes on and he I heard the truck crank up outside and, and I looked out of my window and I saw his truck leaving out of the driveway. And I went into the room, I said, Dad, Mama, where Daddy going? He said, your sister ain't here yet. <laughs> and so the next thing I knew, I, I went back in my room and you know, as young siblings, I, I, I was sitting just waiting to see what was going to happen. Because uh, my dad had left out of the house, she ain't home yet, or oh, it's about to go down. But probably about 10 minutes later, I, I, I heard my father's truck pulling in, and then I heard one car door close, and then I heard another car door close, and I said, well, she must be outside. And, and, and I waited to hear what was going to happen, and I, I waited, and I didn't hear any conversation happen. I didn't hear uh, anybody say anything when they got into the house, and the next morning, I overheard my dad having a conversation with my sister, and to make it short, he pretty much told her that if she wasn't there, he was coming to get her because she had a time that she was supposed to be home and she wasn't there when she was supposed to be. So as her father, it was his duty to go and look for her and make sure she came home. I want to let you know today that, that, that I believe that my father sets a good example and exemplifies what we find with our God in heaven. Because every now and then there are situations and times in our lives where we are not where we're supposed to be, when we're supposed to be there. And I am so happy that we serve a God that when we're not where we're supposed to be, when we're supposed to be there, our God doesn't always wait for us to show up, but he'll put his jacket on and his bedroom shoes and he'll come look for us wherever we might be. He'll come and search for us because there's something about the presence of a good father who'll come and look for you, who'll come and search for you when you are not where you're supposed to be. The greatest thing about that story was is that I later found out is that my daddy had no idea where he was looking. He just left the house in search. He didn't have a destination in mind, but he just knew that his daughter, his only daughter, his only baby girl wasn't where she was supposed to be, and so he was going to go look Look for her even though he didn't know where she was. I am so happy God is just like that. No matter where we are or what we're going through, God will come and look for us. We might be in the highways and byways. We may be in some deep dark places, but God will come and look for us because there is something about the presence of a good father. There is power in presence. Yes, 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 because of a father's presence, because of presence, it talks without words being spoken. When you have presence, people look up. When you have presence, folks step back. When you have presence, people want to figure out what's going on. Today as we celebrate and recognize our fathers, it is important for us to also think about our father who art in heaven. And before we get too deep in what I have to say, I do want to preface from a theological perspective that I understand and it is true that everybody, when we hear the words and terms father, it does not always elicit a positive response. 
The fact of the matter is, is that in biblical texts today, I want you to understand and want you to know that 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 scholars throughout history and writers of scripture have not done a good job of ensuring that the biblical text is inclusive. I want to let you know that, that, that every time we hear the term father in the Bible, that it oftentimes elicits to us an earthly understanding of what father is. But I want you to know that all of our language that we use to talk about God is inferior to who God really is. So anytime that we call God father, I want you to know that that does not even get close to describing to us who God really is. So for those of us today who are scarred by masculine terms and father, I want to let you know that in my message today, though I call God father, I understand that that doesn't even come close to what God has been to you. That doesn't even get close to how good God has been to you. That's why when I pray, I say, God, our father and our mother, because God is everything that we need God to be in our lives. Nevertheless, as we begin to think about this God, the presence of God in our life, the presence of fathers in our earthly lives, there are parallels. There are things for us to understand. But there are three things that I think that power, the power of presence asserts in our lives. First and foremost, that when you have a good fatherly presence in your life, one of the first things that a good fatherly presence and the power of presence in our lives does is that it assures us. For as we find in the text today, it is an interesting thing that we find, for we find Jesus coming from Galilee, coming to the Jordan River. He comes in contact with John. He says to John, hey, John, I need you to baptize me. And John says, well, hold up, you Jesus. I need you to baptize me. And Jesus' response to him is, I need for this to happen. We need to fulfill the scriptures. And go ahead and do what I asked you to do first time. And so John obliges Jesus and baptizes him in the Jordan. What is amazing is what takes place after Jesus is baptized. For the Bible says is that after Jesus is baptized, that heaven opens up and a light descends from heaven and the voice of God says, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. I want to let you know why this is an interesting account, why this is important for us to understand, why this ought to be something that ought to make you shout and run out of the church and go ahead and take your daddy out for brunch and celebrate your father today is because this is profound at what happens in this moment. Because up until this moment, and for all of our biblical scholars, uh, you know, uh, Sister Parker, I got to add you to the biblical scholars list. Rufus, you in trouble because Sister Parker coming for your, your title as, as, the, as, as the biblical scholar in the first chapter. Uh, uh, but, but Sister Parker, Rufus, I, I want y'all to understand and, 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 and help the rest of us understand today that, that this is the first time that God speaks in 400 years. I, I want you to understand this, that that that. that God has not spoken in 400 years. Since the end of the Old Testament, we have not heard directly from God. And, and, and it is in this moment that God makes himself known again. Uh, 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 the scriptures, even, even when we hear the story of the birthing of Jesus, God doesn't speak. He sends an angel to tell Mary that she will be with child. But in this moment, God shows up. God says, I'm not sending an angel to the baptism of my son. I'm not sending a surrogate to the baptism of my child. I, I, I'm going to come and show up Myself. God shows up 
after 400 years of silence and, and this is something that we ought to pay attention to and, and, and begin to understand uh, that there is something profound happening. And as I said, the first thing that we must understand, the power of present, is that it assures. And what I believe is that God wanted to assure Jesus that he had a father who was all powerful, all knowing, and had his back no matter what. There's something about knowing that somebody got your back. That you are assured that without a shadow of a doubt that when, it, when the funk hits the fan, that they are going to be there and they're going to be by your side. I believe that God shows up after 400 years to let it be known that I know there's a lot of talk in the streets, that there's a lot of people talking, there's a lot of people wondering, but I am showing up to let them know that you have a father who has your back. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I want to let you know that, that this just isn't true about Jesus. But I want to let you in on a secret that the same gift that God gave to Jesus, he also gave to you. And he has your back today. He, he wants to assure you that you have a father who will show up on your behalf. You got a father who will come and see about you. You got a father that when the rough gets rougher, that, that you don't got to look over your shoulder and wonder if he's going to show up. But he wants to assure you that he is in it with you and he's going to walk with you. Yes, yes, yes. We, we are assured that God will show up. Yeah, yeah. But, but that's, that's not it. But the second thing that happens and that we understand here is that because God shows up, he not only shows up and, and makes a bold statement with his presence. You know, that, that's, that's, that's just like a good dad. You know, he, he just don't show up and drive up in a pinto. With, but the Bible says that heaven opens up and the light comes down and the doves descend. You know, he had to make an entrance. You know, he, he had to make an entrance. He had to let, you, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't come in with, with, with rollers in his head with his. But he, he had to make a statement. Uh, so he assured him with his presence. But secondly, he affirmed him. Yeah, the Bible says that that first he showed up. And after he showed up, he affirmed Jesus. With his presence, he assured him. With his words, he affirmed him. For he said, this is my son. Oh, we didn't stop right there. He, he said, this, this is my boy. Yeah, yeah, this, 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 this right here, this is mine. This, this is my son. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't get it twisted. I, I know y'all think Mary and Joseph and Charles this thing, but, but this, this is my son. He, he, he affirms him. For people had already been talking about this Jesus and him being the Messiah. And, and you know folks talk. You, you know how y'all do. Y'all talk. <laughs> folks get to talking. You know, you know that's really Johnny's son. <laughs> Y'all wouldn't have laughed if that wasn't true. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, folks get to talking, and, 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 and God had, had to show up so that he could affirm Jesus. Not only for Jesus' sake, because you know sometimes the power of presence is that God might reassure you and affirm you right where you are, because every now and then you, you need God to, to reaffirm uh, that you on the right track. Every now and then you need God to, to reaffirm that you walking down the right road. Every now and then you, you need God to reaffirm and just say, boy, keep on running, sister. You, you, you got it going on. Every now and then you, you just need a little reaffirming. But, but this affirmation was not just for Jesus. No, no, no. Uh, but, but God being, being a good father, a good dad, a good, good, good heavenly father, 
he not only wanted Jesus to be reaffirmed, but he wanted everybody around to know that this is my son. Yeah, this is my son. There's something about when you got a powerful dad. When you got a daddy that can do whatever he wants to do. When, when a daddy who can make his own rules. A daddy who can do whatever he wants to do. It is something about letting everybody know who your daddy is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's something powerful about letting everybody know that, that I got a father who, 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 can, who can check you. I got a father who can straighten you out. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like, you know, when... You on the playground and you get pushed down and they bigger than you and you can't fight them off. And then you go home and you tell your big brother they was picking on you and they was talking about you. And then the next day at the playground, you come and it looked like you by yourself. But when they roll up on you, big brother stepped from behind the building to let them know uh, 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 this is this is my brother. This is my sister. In other words, God showed up to say, "This is my son. This is my son." And because he's my son, I won't let you know he's different than y'all. He might look like you, but but he's a little different than y'all. Because of me, he'll do great things. Because of me, he'll work miracles. Because of me, he'll turn water into wine. Because of me, he'll walk on water. Because of me, he'll heal blinded eyes. Because of me, he'll make the lame to walk. Because of me, he'll get up early Sunday morning. Uh, he's different than the rest of you. Because this is my son. This is my son. And I want to let you know uh, that there's, there's something powerful uh, about this. And, and, and you know, I, I believe that there's, there's somebody that tells this story better than I can tell it. Uh, and and they're going to, I hope they don't mess this thing up. You, you know, one of the greatest movies ever made was Lion King. Yeah. Yeah. You know that, you know they're coming out here, you Lion King, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. I hope they don't mess up the Lion King. Yeah. They didn't mess up Aladdin. Aladdin was all right, so I hope they don't mess up the Lion King. But... But, but, but for those of you all who don't remember the Lion King, you know, if you got Simba, who, who, whose daddy is Mufasa. Yeah, y'all seen it, y'all seen it. And he got an uncle named, he got an uncle named Scar. And, and so Mufasa is king of the pride. And Simba is in line to be king. And so he got an uncle who's a hater who sets his daddy up to get killed. And so once his father's killed, he gets Simba to run off thinking he had something to do with it. And so Simba runs away out into the wilderness. And while he's out there in the wilderness, he meets a couple of good old friends named Timon and Pumbaa. And then they find out about Akuna Matata. It means no words for the rest of our days. He was living his best life out there in the wilderness until he came across this monkey named Rafiki. Rafiki hit him over the head a couple of times with a stick. And he said something to him about, you were Mufasa's boy. And he says, you knew my father? Correction, I know your father. He says, what do you mean my father is dead? He says, no, your father is still alive. He says, let me take you to see him. And so he takes Simba down through the woods over to some water and he looks at the water and first he sees himself and he says, that's not my father. He says, look harder. <laughs> and as he keeps looking at the water, he starts to see his father. Mufasa comes on the scene and Mufasa starts talking to him and he says, you have forgotten 
who you are. You are more than what you have become. You are my son. Remember who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mufasa uh, has to come back and, and reaffirm to Simba that you are not what your Uncle Scar made you to believe. You are not what the world has made you to believe. But, but Mufasa had to come back from the grave to remind Simba that you are my son and, and you ought to remember who you are. I, I just want to come to First Calvary and let you all know today uh, that, that, that this just ain't about Jesus and Jesus tell, being able to hear God tell him you are my son. But I want you to know uh, that God also has a few other children sitting here in First Calvary at this church today. And, 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 and there's some daughters sitting out there. There's some sons sitting out there. And I just want to let you know today that you got to remember who you are. You, you got to remember who your daddy is. You, you got to remember who your father is. You, you got to remember that you got a father in heaven who has all power in his hands. You, you got to remember that you got a daddy who has a presence that is a showstopper. You got to remember that when your father comes through the door, everybody stops and wonders. You got to know that you have a father that when he stands up, every knee shall bow and every tongue comes back. You gotta remember that you have a daddy who has all power and if you call him, he'll come and see about you. You, you are my son. You must remember who you are. Church, we, we gotta remember who our daddy is. And I, you know, I told y'all this story before about my daddy. Y'all. I told y'all this story about my daddy. You know, my, my dad, he's the best dad in the whole wide world. Can't nobody else beat him. I, I know y'all think y'all are good fathers here, but my dad just happens to be the greatest father in the whole wide world. Uh, but but growing up, you know, my father was a principal in the same school system, and you know, all the other principals knew who my daddy was. Every now and then, I used to stunt on the teacher. <laughs> He started acting crazy. Do you know who my daddy is? Call over there to Alcorn Middle School. Over there to Lee County High School. Ask for the principal. That's, that's my daddy. If they don't know, they was going to find out. But there's something about being reassured. And being able to be safe and secure in knowing who your daddy is. That you have a father in heaven who reassures you, who affirms you. But last but not least, I want to let you know the last thing that, that he does in this is that he encourages you with his presence. The Bible says that after he says, says you, this is my son. And then after that he says, whom I am. Well, please. Yeah, yeah, he said, this is my son. But not only is this my son, but this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, sometimes you'll claim him, but you ain't always pleased. But what I love about, about, about God is that God not only comes with his presence, not only comes with his words to, 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 to affirm, but he comes and he encourages by, by saying, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And the reason, the reason this, this, this is interesting at this point in Jesus' ministry and journey, if for, 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 for my scholars, you know that Jesus ain't done nothing yet. Amen. Jesus ain't done nothing yet. He, 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 just, he just got baptized. He ain't been in the wilderness yet. He ain't been to the best wedding this side of heaven and turned water to wine yet. He's not touched blinded eyes yet. He's not walked on water yet. He's not said peace be still yet. He, he hasn't done any miracles yet. 
But yet his father in heaven says, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Oh, there's, there's something uh, about, about having an affirmation from God, but being encouraged by God that, that just because you are his, he is proud of you. That just because you belong to him, he is proud of you. You might not have a whole bunch of money in the bank, but he's still proud of you. You might not have a bunch of degrees behind your name, but he's still proud of you. You might have fallen down a few times, but he's still proud of you. You might not have reached every goal, but, but he say, I am well pleased because you are a part of my house. You, you, you got my blood in you. I can't help but to, to be proud of you because you, you are, are mine. I remember, I remember, it was probably a couple years back, I text my mom and my dad on one of their anniversaries and have great parents and wanted to salute them. And I sent a long, long text. <laughs> Just tell them how much I love them, how much I appreciate them, and, and, and that I hope that, that, that I, I, I made them proud thus far in my life. And, and, and my daddy is, he, he, ain't, he ain't the emotional type. He, he, don't, he, ain't, he, ain't, he ain't emotional that much. But he responded back with a very simple message. I, I knew he wasn't going to type all like I, I, I just knew he wasn't going to do all that. But he sent a simple message back to me. And he said, because you are son, we were already proud of you. And there is nothing that you can do to gain our pride. But because you are our son, we are proud of you. And there's something about being encouraged by knowing that just because he's our God, that he's proud of us. That he's encouraging us. That, that, that we don't got to be perfect, but he still loves us. We don't got to cross all our T's and dot all our I's, but, but he still loves us. And, and we, we don't have to be flashy and out front, but, but he, he loves us no matter what we've done or where we've been. Jesus hadn't done anything, and he says, I am well pleased. I won't let you know you might not have done everything that you want to do in life. You might not have been everywhere that you want to go. You might not have done it all, but God just wants you to know that he is well pleased pleased with you that you are his child and because you are his child he, he's well well pleased with you and as I get ready to take my seat I just want to let you know that this entire conversation that happens in Matthew the 13th chapter go back to the beginning of it there is no prayer that happens at the beginning of the conversation when Jesus shows up at the Jordan River, he immediately enters conversation with John. And just so happened, God is watching and he shows up. There was no prayer, meaning that there was nothing that elicited an ask or request for God to show up. They didn't request his presence. But because he knew that the world needed him to show up, he didn't have to be asked to come, but he just said, I'm going to show up. Because they ain't heard from me in a long time, and because they need to be assured, and because they need to be affirmed, and because they need to be encouraged, I'm just going to show up. I don't know about you, but, but, but the best experiences that I've had with my Father in heaven are the moments not when I prayed for him to show up, but the moments when he looked down on me and said, he just needs me to show up in his life. He just needs me to come into his moment. He can't ask for me to come, but he just needs me to show up. And if God is just like that, he's a good father who, who you don't have to request him to come, but he'll do drive by and step out and say, I just came by to check on you. I, I just came by to see about you. I just came to check on you. I, I saw you the other day and you looked a little down. I just wanted to bring you a little joy today. I just wanted to lift your spirits today because when God shows up, the power of his presence is that he can change the atmosphere. 
atmosphere. He can turn your morning into dancing. He can turn your frowning into smiling. He can turn your despair into gratefulness. He can take you off your knees and get you to shine. Because when God shows up, when a good, good father shows up, everything changes. People start looking. People start watching. Because they realize that you got a father and they want to get to know your dad too. They want to figure out how can I join your family. Is your daddy Yes, I'll accept it. Yes, I want to walk with you. 
Yes, I want to pick it back up again. Yes, I want to be back in a good relationship with you. Yes, I want to know what it's like to have a God, a Father that affirms me. Yes, I want to know what it's like to have a God that will encourage me. Yes, I want to know what it's like to have a God that will assure me. And if there's one today, this moment is just for you to come by the letter of the Baptism of Christian Experience. Give us your hand and give God your heart. And watch how things change. To help you, want everybody stand on your feet. There may be one who's wrestling today. This moment is for you. of us, God. God, you're able, and so that's the reason we come to you, God, because there's no question about what you can do, God. You can do whatever you need to do, God, so hear the prayers of your people today. We ask right now, God, that whatever it is that our brother or our sister whose hand we hold today, whatever they stand in need of, God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you hear their prayer, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you begin to move in them and through them, God. Hear their prayer, God. If it's healing, God, send healing. If it's restoration, send restoration. If it be strength, send strength. If it's direction, give them direction. Whatever it is that they stand in need of today, God, we pray right now, God, that you hear them and you answer their prayers, oh God. There's some that they got who came in with heavy hearts, God, with weary minds, God, but they come to the right place at the right time, God, because you are a peace giver, God, and your word says that the peace that you give surpasses all understanding, God. Let your peace fall upon us, oh God, right now, God. Let hearts that are heavy laden today, God, lay their burdens at the altar, God, and pick up your yoke, for your word says that your yoke is easy, God, that it's not a burden to follow after you, God, so let the weights fall away even now in the name of Jesus, God. There's some who are dealing with healing bodies and sickness in their bodies today, God. We come right now, God, pleading the blood of Jesus upon them, pleading your word. Your word says that by your stripes we are healed, God, that there's not a sickness that has more power than you do, God. Healing even now in the name of Jesus. For every name that falls on the sick and shed and listens right now, God, we pray that you give them strength, encourage them, God. Let your presence be known that they might be affirmed, assured, and encouraged to keep on running to see what they is going to be. We ask right now, God, that you bless this congregation of faith, these disciples who gathered in this place today called First Tower, God. Bless us that we might be the church that you come back for, God, the church without a spot or a wrinkle, God. Bless every leader, every friend, every member, even now today that we might be able to serve your people God let them see you when they come into this place God let them discover your glory God when they walk through the threshold 
throne of this place. Let them feel your anointing, oh God, when they're sitting on the pew, when they're in this place, oh God, because that's what it's all about. We want them to see you, God. We want them to meet you, God. Let us be a vessel to allow that to happen. Bless this community called Winston-Salem, oh God. Bless this state and this nation. For God, you still have the whole world in your hands. You still hold the heart of the king in your hand. You can move it whichever way it needs to be moved. So God, have your way even now. And so for every prayer prayed both publicly and privately out now, God, we count it done in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All of God's people said amen. amen.